Hi, and welcome to this video on linear patterns, brought to you by the Answer Series. Quick reminders, because this work is familiar to you from earlier grades, we're looking at the difference between the terms. So if we take the first two terms, the difference is 7. If we take the next two terms, the difference is still 7. Because of this, we can generate subsequent terms as long as we know the preceding terms. So we can add 7 to 17 to get 24. And again, we can add 7 to 24 to get 31. The problem is we can't use that method to generate a formula for the nth term, and we certainly don't want to have to work out the 50th term if what we need is the 51st term. So we're going to just pause for a moment and have a look at the straight line graph, because there's a strong connection between the straight line graph and a linear pattern. So if we were looking for the formula of a straight line graph, we would recognize the form as y equals mx plus c. The gradient would be the rise over the run. So the rise would be the difference in the y values, which in this case is 7. And the run would be the difference between the x values, which in this case is 1. So our gradient would be 7, and we would go y equals 7x plus c. To work out the c value, we would substitute any point. So I would choose the easiest point, 1, 3. So 3 is the y value. x is equal to 1. So we work out that c equals negative 4. Now, the linear pattern is very similar. We're going to use the formula Tn equals An plus B. A is going to represent the constant change in the same way that M in the straight line represents the constant gradient. And we know that our constant change is 7. So this is going to be Tn equals 7n plus B. Now, we can substitute and get 3 equals 7 plus B. And therefore, we know that B equals minus 4. So our answer here is 7n minus 4. We can easily find the minus 4 by inspection by simply saying when the answer needs to be 3, we need to substitute n equal to 1. And if we put 1 into here, we get 7, but we need 3, so we subtract 4. Okay, if you need to have another look at what I've just been through with you, pause the video, do this in your own time, and when you're ready, we'll do the next example together. I want you to read this on your own, process it, pause the video, and then try the question on your own. Okay, so what do we know? If we take 6 and 14, the difference is 8. If we take 14 and 22, the difference is still 8. So we have a common difference of 8. We can easily generate the next two terms because we are simply adding on 8 each time. So we are going to get 30 and 38. Now we need to generate the formula for this. So we're going to do it by inspection. Tn equals 8 because that's the common difference. So the coefficient of n is always the common difference. Now we just need to work out by inspection what the b value is. So if we substitute the position value, so we only substitute 1, we know the answer is 6. So 6 is equal to 8 plus b and therefore b equals minus 2. So Tn is equal to 8n minus 2. Again, if you need to go through this one more time on your own, pause the video, and when you're ready, we'll move on to the next question. Slightly different, only in that these terms are dropping in value. So pause the video, try it on your own, and then I'll go through it with you. When the numbers decrease, it's very important that you attach a negative to the difference, otherwise it doesn't work. So the common difference now is negative 4. Each term drops off by 4. So the next term will be negative 1, then it will drop off by 4, and the next term will be negative 5. So we can continue our pattern like that. Then to form the general term, we're going to use the exact same process, coefficient in front of n is the common difference. Now we know that the first term value is 11. So 11 is equal to minus 4 plus b, and therefore b is equal to 15. So Tn is equal to minus 4n plus 15. Pause the video if you need a second look. This example is setting us up for the question that follows. Try this on your own and then we'll have a quick look at the solution. Common differences of 2 generating the next two terms of 11 and 13, 
And then to create the formula, your coefficient is 2. If you substitute 2 in, you need to add 1 in order to give you a first term of 3. Pause the video if you need more time. Okay, so what is different now is that we have an unknown series, 3p, 5p, 7p. So we are simply going to have a difference which contains p. No difference in our method, it just looks a little less friendly. We're going to have a common difference of 2p. We can see that the increase is constant, but it's an unknown amount. doesn't make any difference to our method, 7p and 11p. And then to generate our terms, we are going to have a complicated coefficient of 2p in front of n plus b. Now, when we substitute 1 to achieve a result of 3p, we are going to get 2p plus b. So b simply has to equal p. So tn is equal to 2pn plus p. It's worth noting that if you take out p as a common factor, you get 2 n plus 1, which is very similar to the formula we had in the previous question where we had the answer as 2n plus 1. So the only difference when each term has the same variable is that the variable is a common factor and becomes part of the formula. Pause the video, take this at your own pace, and then we'll move on. In example 5, we have a fraction set up which can be overwhelming. Just take your time over this and focus on the numerators independently from the denominators. When you've had a chance to try it, I'll go through it with you. Pause the video. Okay, so if you continue the row at the top, you'll notice that each term increases by 4. So we are simply going to go to 19 and then to 23. If we look at the denominators, we now have gaps at the bottom of 8 each time. So if we continue that, if we add 8 to 29, we're going to get 37. And if we add 8 to 37, we are going to get 45. So we have our next two terms. To create a formula, we need to work independently with the numerator and the denominator. So we are simply going to take our time. We know the numerator is going to be 4n because the coefficient is the common difference. Now we're wanting to get a first term of 3, but if we substitute 1, we will get 4. So we simply subtract 1 to make that work. In the denominator, we're going to put in 8 as the coefficient. And now when we work with 1 for n, we want to get 5, but we are getting 8. So we need to subtract 3. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. Pause the video, look at the detailed solution, and when you're ready, we'll do the next and last question together. Okay, pause, try this on your own, and then we'll go through it together. So it starts very nicely with a gap of two, and then one-fifth stands out like a sore thumb because it's not behaving. Hopefully, they've just simplified a fraction down to one-fifth. So what we're going to do is ignore that for the, for the time being and see what happens if we follow our own pattern. That would be 7. And then if we continue that, the next one would be 9. Now if we go to the denominators, we've got big gaps this time of 11 and 11 again. So now we're going to take a gap of 11, which will give us 35. Now pause and think about this. And 7 over 35 is in fact 1 fifth. We are going to put in the next term by adding 11, so we're going to get 46. Then we have to do one more term, so if we add 11 to 46, we are going to get 57. We go back to the numerator and add 2 to 9, we are going to get 11. So we've generated the next two terms. As before, the formula is simply going to be independently the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator is going to be 2n. We need to get 1, so we're going to subtract 1. The denominator is going to have a massive coefficient of 11, and when we use that, we need to come down all the way to 2. So 11 times 1 is 11. We'll have to subtract 9 to get down to 2. And there's our formula to a very complicated question. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you're looking forward to more videos on patterns and sequences. Pause the video. Process this again if you need to. 
And then if there are any other questions that you struggled with, go back to them and take another look. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.